episode 124 of the <sighs> Super Mega Podcast. What a big number. Wow. That number is big. Can you imagine when we hit episode 124,000? We're going to. Yep. It's inevitable. No, no, it's not. We, we will, we will we not will. be alive. Yes, we will, because remember when we, we signed that contract with the devil, we sold our souls to become YouTube famous, and he said, okay, but you're going to be the first immortal people, and you have to do it until Earth is gone. So we'll probably, like, That's America... not going to be too long. What? It's not going to take too long for Earth to be gone. Well, you don't know that. Earth could still be here, humanity could be gone, and we're the only ones left, and we still have to make videos and podcasts. What's well, for people in the afterlife at that point? It's a new audience. It's an audience of everyone. Heaven FM, baby. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta broadcast up to the, the, the people behind the pearly gates. <sighs> Man, could you imagine, like, dying and then, like, waking up and, like, you're actually in, like, this clouded area with, like, golden pearly gates and shit like that. Like, there's this guy in a robe, and he's like, oh my god, you're Peter. And then he goes, yep, that's me. Don't know why you're here. And then I'd be like, oh, yeah, I'm probably supposed to be down down under. That, that was a mistake. <laughs> like, you show up at the pearly gates, and they're, like, checking the list, and he's like, what's your name? Ryan McGee? With a, with a M-C-G-E-E? I'm like, uh, yeah, and yeah. Like, okay, and he, like, goes through, and he's like, hold on a second. And he, like, calls for somebody, and then you just watch them, like, behind the front desk, like, Kind of quietly talk for a bit, and you're kind like of like I hear, there, I like, hear like MCG, and there's MCG. Well, that's not on here. And I could be like, sir, we don't have your reservation. And you're like, oh, then try M A G. <sighs> sir, we're, you're not on here. That there must have been a mistake. And then make uh, a show called The Good Place about it. Is that already a show? Yeah, the, the, sounds like a Fox show. The whole point of The Good Place is like this person got into the heaven type place, but they they don't belong there because there was a clerical error. God makes plenty of errors, you know, mm -hmm. when he's making that list. Actually, God in the show, his name is Sean. Sean. And they make sure to, like, make it a point for you to know it's a joke, because, like, one of the characters goes, his name's Sean? That's what I love about those types of shows, is they gotta... They gotta really, like, hammer every joke home. Yeah. Honestly, the good news is, when you go to hell, I'll be there, too, so at least we can hang out when we're in hell. Yeah. I mean, it might be fun down in hell. I could. We're gonna be shoveling coal... And like two hundred degree caverns, uh, like just like just covered in dirt and and just sick. And there's gonna be little like demons with pitchforks poking our butts to make sure we don't stop shoveling coal at a really fast rate. But we can still be cracking jokes all the time. I'll be like, "Ah, oh, Ryan, stop!" You throw coal at me, and we'll get in like a fake fight. We're still recording the podcast because, as you said, the devil said this. Right. Um, we gotta do it while we're shoveling coal though for Satan's uh furnace, and and he just has to watch. And Satan's gets foot bath. <laughs> We got. He he needs to soak his little his little pig, piggies. Got to soak them. His hooves. That's the thing. Satan's like he's a nasty guy, but he has a he gets pedicures. He has beautiful feet. He has like French French tips on his toes for some reason. Now you don't believe in ghosts, Matt. Yeah. Do you believe in demons? Isn't a demon just a ghost? It's know. like it's like an I evil guess. ghost. There's people that I've met that are like I don't believe in ghosts, but demons are real. Like okay. Demons, I... That's like going, like, wizards don't exist, but witches are fucking real. Well, witches were real. We killed a bunch of them. That's why they don't exist anymore. Well, maybe we, they should have thought about it. that before, uh, you know, saying a word that men didn't understand at the time. Absolutely. They should have definitely thought about that. They like should have got that through their Okay, don't say, don't say that word, because now you're going to make me think you're a witch. No, well, I'm a man, so I can use big words like that. Oh, yeah. You're a wizard. It's only, it's only, yeah. You're a wizard, Ryan. <laughs> so, guys, but, but anyway, welcome to... Episode one hundred and twenty-four thousand of the Super Mega Podcast. We're just we're just chilling in our studio. I'm sipping some uh, some Kofefe. I'm sipping some Rogaine. Oh, sick! I just spilled hot coffee all over my face and my white shirt. You see that? Look Where's at my the shirt. Face? Look at my shirt. Oh, yep. Do you see that? The shirt I just got. That's white. Uh, Why'd you do that? I didn't. That doesn't come out well. Too. No, and and I mixed hot chocolate mix with it. So in fact, that shirt actually will have that stain on it. Well, or at least have I just bought signs this shirt. Of the stain for a while. I am pissed off for now. probably until you throw it away. I know you can't like really see it, but I'm actually like furious at myself right or now. You're just like, oh, damn it. Because that's not a little spill. That somehow like sprayed on my shirt. It is from the top of my shirt. All do I got to take my shirt off now and go no. like wash it in the sink? Do you have to? Yeah, because I gotta get the stain out ASAP. Okay. Okay. I'll I'll just sit here. Okay, will you will you wait for me to get back? Yeah, I'll wait. Okay, well, I gotta go walk out there with no shirt on and okay. scare the new intern. Okay. I'm like, hey, buddy. It's a no shirt office. You didn't get the memo? And yeah. make him take his shirt off, but then I'll secretly put mine back on so he's working with his shirt off. 
And then Aaron and Brent walk in, and he's just by himself with his shirt off in his first week. That's I'm going to do that right now. Okay. Um, I'll just sit here, and I'll be on my phone. I'm going to call back and I'll... say he got fired. <laughs> okay. Hi, shirt off. Okay. Back. So how'd it go? Uh, washed my shirt off in the sink. Did I take his shirt off? Yeah, he did. He's out there working right now with no shirt on, so... uh. Hope that goes well for him. All right, well, I'm going to have another sip of my coffee. Try not to spill it on yourself I'm, like I'm a not, child. I'm going to try not. Okay, well, I'll have you do, know Do that. you need a bendy straw? Need a little sippy cup? No, Ryan, because I'm an adult. And you know what? It happens sometimes as an adult. Have you? Oh, my God. That just made me think. I don't think there's anything more embarrassing in life than when you spill a drink at someone's house or at a restaurant. And you get it on their shit. Oh, that, oh that's, that's even worse. But, like, you know... As an adult, I mean, it happens to everyone. You'll be at a restaurant and you'll knock your water over. That's more embarrassing than at someone's place to me. Oh, for sure. It's like, oh, I just look, I just look like such a dumbass. I just spilled my water everywhere. And now they got to bring napkins because there's never enough napkins at the table. You feel so bad that you feel like, no, I have to clean this up. The waiters, they, they, they have their hands full right now. They didn't expect this. Yeah. And you kind of get in that little like power struggle with them over cleaning it up. It's like, no, no, I, I got it. They're like, no, no, it's my job. It's fine. It's They're fine. They're like, no, this is my job. I can do it. And, and then like, you just sit there silently while they clean it up and you just don't really say anything to the other person at the table with you. It's like, you just continue to eat. I think that's probably the best thing to do on a first day to spill your drink. Spill yeah. wine, Ooh. like knock over a wine glass. Well, spill wine onto them because then you'll know if if they're if they're an asshole or not. Because if they get mad at you for ruining their favorite, you know, dress or or tuxedo, whichever they want to wear, I think you know there's that thing where it's like take somebody swimming on a first date because then you'll see them without makeup. Dude, girls in tuxes. That's all I'm saying. Okay, that's where it's at. Well, I was saying you know you take there's, there's that like joke where it's like oh take a girl swimming and then you'll see her without makeup so you know what she really looks like. I have a different method where I just. I spill my, I accidentally throw my water in her face at a restaurant. So then I know what she looks like without makeup and we can still go to a fancy restaurant. It's worked every time. They've never gotten mad about it. I just, I, it's like a joke where I'm pretending to throw it, but I let the glass slip so it hits them in the face and the water goes everywhere. I'm also big into like broken noses. So it's hot. It's a look. Do you, you break girls' noses? On the first date. Okay. Have we ever gotten into like any sort of physical alteration and like, Real life. The worst fight you and no, the worst fight you and I ever got in. Let's talk about some fights. Was uh, the only one that I remember that was like that was serious that we both were being little bitches on was the time I I lent you my car. So the day you walked Lego home. Yeah, I yeah, I remember Lego that home. too. I lent you I lent you my car and I can't remember what spiked it, but I but I ended up being a little bitch and like using that as like I gave you my car to drive. I don't remember why that that was. Like, that's actually probably the only fight that comes to mind between us. That was, when was that? That was 2016? Two years ago. That was 2016. Yeah. We, I remember we just, like, <laughs> got into, it was over text, too. And it was, like, so fucking heated. <laughs> I know. And I remember, like, sitting at my desk, like, boiling with rage texting <laughs> you. And, like, every message you sent back, like, made me more mad. And then I would send one back and you would get even madder. And, like, I don't even remember what it was about. It had to do with, like, something with the car and something with, like, Th- th- I think that there was more stuff under the surface that led up to that, and it wasn't actually about that, but then we just yeah, used well, that. you and I a... were, like, living together at the time. Well, the thing is, like, we fucking lived together, we drove to work together, we worked together, we drove back from work we together. It's like, it's just... we, we were up each other's asses for a period. Yeah. I mean, there was a period where it was kind of tense between us because, yeah, we lived together, we had no other really friends out here, so we only hung out with each other. There was, we worked together at Game Grumps. And we had a business, like a channel together. And then like we went back and forth to work. So like we only saw each other. Mm-hmm. And we that was like all all we had in life was just nonstop seeing each other. Boys in the tub. Boys in the <laughs> I miss that. I do miss the hot tub at the old apartment building though. Yeah. Go go up there and cook in, cook cook in the jug like a stew, dude. Yeah. A lot of things happened in that hot tub, apparently. Well, we don't need to get on that. It's no, I'm I'm saying when I was talking to the oh, security yeah. guard. <laughs> Same. That's I loved her. I miss her. She got fired randomly. Oh, she yeah. Moved or she was the nicest security guard at our old apartment building. And then she got fired for like. Then we got like the Nigerian dude. The Nigerian dude was cool. Yeah. Uh, he, I liked him. He was chill. He was very nice. But I, I did like her because she was like, she would always kind of like spill the beans on other people. I think that's why she got fired. <laughs> Probably. I'm almost certain that's why she got fired. <laughs> but uh, I remember she would like, she would give us like, like tips on how to like avoid the apartment charging us for stuff. And we're like, thank you. And I'm almost certain that's why they fired her. They're like, what? Did, why is she doing this? We're losing money. She was sweet, though. She was so nice. She always said hey to us. Did you break her nose? No, I didn't go on a date with her. I, <laughs> yes, I, well, I was about the... this close to asking her on a date, and then they fired her. So yeah. I lost all 
line of contact. If she's listening, if she's a big Superman fan, you're listening, hit me up. I miss you a lot. I don't remember your name, but... Do we ever tell a story of the time that I... Did we ever tell that story, or is that a private what story? story? I don't know what story you're talking about. Where I tried to, there was a where I tried to send you a funny snap of explosive shit into the lobby toilet. <laughs> have we ever, have we ever told that story? Mm, mm. I don't think we have. I don't think we have. So, I didn't know I mean, if you wanted to, but I think that this is. I think it's, it's enough it's time, time has passed. It's I, honestly, Ryan. I think that that day was the hardest I've ever laughed in my life, and I'm excited to finally tell this story. <laughs> so okay, for all of you. To know, you know, there was a uh, there was a period where the comedy amongst us was like shitting and pissing in the toilets obscenely. Like it would be like regular snaps, and then randomly just like we, like, we would we would shocking, we would but... send each other videos of like <coughs> uh, like explosive diarrhea. Yeah, like like we would like really hold it in and then just send a video. I'd send a video to Ryan like a fucking of it just kind of like exploding, it's like a out. glitter bomb of yeah. shit. Cause he'd open a Snapchat, I'm like, "What did Matt send me?" And then it, it, you know, and then we'd send it back and forth. Or it's just like a log, just, you know, we were we were younger. <laughs> we don't do that anymore. No, I think it reached a point where we're like, eh, we don't. Do you not do that anymore with any of your no. other friends? No, I don't. No. Okay. <laughs> yeah. No. 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 Um, okay. <laughs> but I remember we were we were walking around, uh, like kind of like a mall area, and I don't remember who was with us. It was you, me, and like another friend. I thought it was just you and I. Or this, well, a- after we split up from them. Because w- I thought we were meeting up with someone. I think there was one more person there. It was I only you we- and I. I was waiting in the lobby with someone. Just yourself. Okay, well, we were walking around, and and you looked at me with this look I've never seen. And you were like, Matt, I have to take a shit right now. And then, like, I followed you. You kind of, like, ran back to the apartment. Like, you were, like, like booking. So you tell your side of the story first. Okay, okay. And then, and then, and then... You know, you get you're gonna end it on the cliffhanger that it's like, and then you pick up. Then it's gonna be like twenty minutes earlier. Okay. <laughs> then I'll like tell twenty four style. <laughs> yeah. Boop. So from Matt's Boop. perspective, this is what happens. So I'm following Ryan, and he's like, <laughs> like sweat upon his brow. I've I've never seen Ryan have to shit this bad. I'm a little hanky and everything. And, I, and I'm like, this is serious. And uh, we get back to the apartment, we get in the lobby, and Ryan's like, I can't even run up to the apartment. I just have to go in the lobby, not in the lobby, in the lobby bathroom. Yeah. Um, you went in the lobby that one time. They did the apartment did not like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, but he's running the bathroom, and I was like, I was like, hey man, keep me updated. Uh, send it to me. And he runs in the bathroom, and uh, I think about twenty minutes go by. Yeah, a good long time. I don't hear. I don't like. I'm like, what's taking Ryan so long in the bathroom? And uh, he comes out with this look on, like, like you just seen a ghost, like just shocked. And I was like, what's up? And you're like, check your check your phone. And I'll, I'll pass it over to Ryan now. <laughs> okay, let's step back 20 minutes later, or earlier, okay? 20 minutes earlier. I'm walking into the restroom. I feel that this is the type of explosive shit where everything kind of comes out all at once in one little... Yeah. Poof, like one of those. Like a, like a t-shirt gun. It's like uncorking some, some, a, nice, yeah. some nice alcohol. Like you shake up a champagne bottle and <laughs> pop the cork off. Exactly. So I, I, I was feeling that. I was feeling that pop sensation. I was like, this is going to be a perfect snap. This is going to be a... This is going to make Matt so just happy. So what I do is I I lift up the toilet seat and I kind of squat over the Wait, why'd you lift up the toilet seat if you were shitting? No, I mean, I'm I'm squatting over... Oh, the the bigger toilet seat, not the... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. So I I squat over the bowl because I got to have it go right into the bowl. Because I'm not gonna put my phone underneath myself when it when it's oh yeah like no that. and then that's 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 too vulgar we, yeah I, we we don't want to see all that we just want to see the the impact with the water yeah so so I'm I'm film so like I'm filming like I know I'm filming and then I go poof and I'm like oh dude that's a good one and then I look at the camera to see if it's recording and then I'm like the bowl's empty there's no there's no <laughs> shit in the bowl <laughs> and then I remember and then I'm then then I'm like oh, oh shit wait, I forgot wait. to record it. And I got confused, and then I turned around. <laughs> no, because I remember I opened the Snapchat, and I just see the toilet bowl. I see, I just see water, and I, I, I hear this <laughs> massive release, but nothing happens in the toilet bowl. And then, like, the video abruptly stops. <laughs> And then I look back. I had blown that whole load on the back of the toilet, like on the, on the like on the handle, on the wall. And like, I'm like, 
my god, the horror that struck me, because this was just going to be a fun little goop that I was sending to my friend. And now I'm in a world of shit, quite literally. literally. And so, and the, the, the reason it took me so long is because, like, I went to fucking town cleaning up my shit. I was like... I am not leaving the restroom like this. Because the thing is, they, ha they have cameras in the lobby. So, like, if someone went in there, it was like, someone just, someone just, like, how do you shit do that? Shit on the back of the toilet. <laughs> someone just shit all over and the back of the commode. And it was diarrhea, It wasn't just shit, it was diarrhea. <laughs> and my, my favorite part about it was how the video abruptly stops, and you can tell it's the moment you realize <laughs> yep. that you've done that. And then you immediately, like, I, I tap to the next video, and then it, it, was just a a, it was just a picture of the aftermath. And I wish I still had that picture. And when I saw that, I don't think I've ever laughed harder. <laughs> and, and you were, like, on your hands and knees in there cleaning it up. I like, was. Like, I, I, I cleaned it up, like... Perfectly. No, no, yeah, you, you, would never, you would never know. You couldn't tell I was in there. It's just, like, <laughs> just having to do that, like... I used up almost all of their toilet paper. Like, I went through so many rolls, flushing, wiping, getting some water and soap, flushing. Like, I, oh my God. Just the, just the moment of fear. Because I didn't know what was going on. My brain didn't know how to process. I'm like, why didn't my, because I felt my asshole was right over the toilet bowl. And I'm like, why is there no shit in the bowl? It was the angle, man. Just, just, and the whole thing of just turning back and seeing that fucking monstrosity it of, really was, man. <laughs> of spray. It really was like. Just all over the back of the toilet. It's like in Spongebob. When they do the hyper like detailed <laughs> shit, it's like if you ask someone to draw that, like, some shit, that's what it looked like. And it was all Ugh. over the back, man. You fucking exploded that. I and mean, then I just wanted to like, what went through your brain when you when you turned around? <laughs> just horror. Because like at first it was like fuck, fuck, <laughs> fuck. Because like I in my head at first I was like I'm gonna have to go tell someone I made an accident. <laughs> but then I'm like no I can't do and that. Be like how, how did this happen? I can't do that. I'm a grown like 22 year old man or 21, however old I was at the time. This was this was years. ago. I was probably ago. 21. This was this was well over two years ago. Yeah. No, I was probably 22 at the time. Yeah, I think we, probably 22, yeah. 21 or 22. Uh, and I, I, I was 19 or 20. And then I had to take it upon myself to but to see, right my wrongs. That's what you did, though, because you know how many people in this world, and I've seen it, because I, I worked at a restaurant. Well, do you know how many do normal? Just don't clean it do up. you know how many normal people just take a shit in the bowl and just don't flush? Yeah, you, you might have taken a shit outside of the bowl, but you. I at least cleaned up after <laughs> myself. What a mess! Yeah. And you were in there for like twenty minutes. I was in there for a while. You were like, "Man, he's taking a." Yeah, while. I remember just seeing the lobby. Like this, this is this. This one must be bad. And then <laughs> it was bad. It you was came bad. out like your face was like white. <laughs> like you were just because like, you know I have a horrible gag reflex. <laughs> the whole time I'm in, I'm in just fucking hell, gagging, touching my shit, washing my hands, like having like just ugh. Imagine having to go with the Nigerian guy and be like, <laughs> "Hey man, I uh, I missed the bowl. <laughs> well, How do you I, miss I, the bowl?" And, and, he, and no, but he thinks you mean like you like pissed outside the bowl and he comes <laughs> in and there's just a massive like grown man shit all over the back of the bowl. I gotta see if that picture is somewhere. That picture is glorious. It's, it's a wonderful picture. It, it, I'd like to frame it and just like give it to you it on your, your bathroom. Birthday. You should put it in yours. It's like a reminder, <laughs> like, don't miss the ball this time. Oh. So, so what a classic story. That was one of the funniest moments I've ever had with you in my life. One of the funniest moments of my entire life. That's in the top three. Yeah, I was rushing to that. Like, you saw I was on the ground laughing. Like, and I, you know, I actually did have to go. Like, I was rushing to that bathroom. I was, no, yeah. I, was, I, I remember was, when you told me you had to shit, I was like, damn, he really had, because you were just like, booking it yeah with like a look on your face like he means business but the thing is like like i was i was going so fast to that bathroom like but not as fast as postmates delivery service that's right ryan other than your absolute best friends who could you ask to bring you red wine at 4 p.m sushi at 9 p.m and a breakfast burrito at 8 a.m that's Postmates. Postmates is your personal food delivery, grocery delivery, and whatever you can think of delivery service all year round. Actually, uh, I we talked about this on a previous podcast. I actually used Postmates to Postmate Ryan tissues and lotion at 6 a.m. Yep. and they delivered them. Oh yeah, you uh, did. So, so like, they probably wanted us to talk about like a personal story with Postmates, that's one of them. I, I surprised Ryan with lotion and tissues at yeah. 6 a.m. And so you didn't have to like go to the store or anything. And no. That, and it's the same thing for y'all. You know, no more trips to the store. You don't even have to know where the store is. Postmates will deliver anything to you at any time. Just well, well, you know, depending on whether what places are closed and stuff. 
Yeah, they're not gonna break into a business and cook up a burrito at yeah. 4 a.m. if it's not open, but if it's open, they'll deliver it. Yeah, you can simply download the app for iOS or Android for free! Browse local restaurants and businesses and track your delivery. 24 hours a day, 356 days a year. 65. 65 There's, days a year. How many How many days are there in a year, Matt? 365. Okay. Thank you. Postmates will bring you what you want within the hour. Anything you're craving, Postmates can deliver. They're the largest on-demand network in the known universe with more than 25,000 partner merchants. And for a limited time, Postmates is giving our listeners $100 of Ooh. free delivery credit for your first seven days. Damn. To start your free deliveries, download the app right now and use code SUPERMEGA. That's code SUPERMEGA for 100 big ones of free delivery credit for your first seven days when you download the Postmates app. Get anything you need, anytime you need it. Download Postmates and save with code SUPERMEGA. What I love about Postmates is... They don't just deliver food. You want anything, be like, go to Walmart and get me a pack of pencils. They will literally bring you a pack of pencils. It's fantastic. I use Postmates uh, at least once a week. So guys, uh, I'm sure you all know what Postmates is, but you can go use our code, get yourself some free delivery credit. Don't have to pay for delivery. $100 for dollars that's, of that's delivery a lot. credit. That's a lot. So thanks, Postmates. So yeah, I wish I, I should have just called Postmates for some toilet paper <laughs> come, and cleaning supplies. They, that's the thing, they would have done it. They would have you come could in have clutch. barricaded yourself in the bathroom, called Postmates for cleaning supplies and toilet paper, and within the hour, they would have been there with that. You'd have just been like, man, this is taking a while. But I mean, <laughs> you, it was already taking a while. I'm just waiting in the lobby, and then a Postmates driver comes in <laughs> with cleaning supplies and just walks into the bathroom with you. I would just be so confused. I'd be like, oh, man. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. I hired man. a maid cleaning service. No, I, I, I hired the topless maids. They just walk in topless, like three of them with, like, toilet plungers. They have to and clean sh- my shit off of the back of a commode. And you're just standing in the corner, like, with your arms crossed, like, very good, very good. You missed a spot. You're, like, smoking a cigar while they're cleaning your shit up. Topless maids, that's an actual company. In I LA, yeah, that's a thing. But you, I haven't you, found, I want to see, you know what, I'm, I'm going to look up reviews of the business Topless Maids. Like, wh- it's so weird in, like, uh, objectifying. It's like the weirdest shit. It's like, come clean my house, but have your titties out while you do it. I don't understand people that legitimately order that. Like, I'm guessing, it sounds like probably something like a 60-year-old rich Divorced white dude would do. He's like, ooh, I'm going to have some topless college students come clean my house today. Okay, here's one. A little bit dirty topless maids cleaning service. And A I'm, little bit dirty. I'm going to look up reviews because there's another clean. Okay. Do they, do, they, do they fuck too? Is that like the secret thing about it where like they can't advertise it, but it's like, ooh, you know, that's what happens. Thank you, Eric, for the sexy topless bartender and server you provided for my husband's surprise birthday party. (laughs) They were super sexy, and we will definitely be recommending your services to our friends. My husband can't stop. Is this like a fucking what? Like, is this the Gatsby type people? Like, who does the? It's like my husband loved the fucking device of the topless. Like they they refer to them as like fucking like devices and utensils and shit. My favorite thing about that. My favorite thing about that review is that it's a wife that got her husband a topless woman and then was so happy with how much he liked it, she went on Yelp to write a review about how much she loved the topless woman they supplied for her husband. That is hysterical to me. <laughs> this one's good. I'm, I'm happy I called a little dirty topless cleaning services because Cleo did a great job cleaning and was a pleasure to have in my home. She cleaned my bathrooms and helped with folding and hanging laundry. Her looks were amazing, and so were her cleaning abilities. I recommend this service to anyone who wants their home cleaned by a sex-looking lady. (laughs) (laughs) Good job, Caesar D. A sex-looking lady. Hold on, let me read a sex-looking lady. Uh, I love this one. I I emailed them, and I haven't heard a response in two weeks. The maid is still here. Please pick her up. The name of the person who who did that review is Hot Rachel. Hot Rachel. She needed a, <laughs> a, a sex looking lady. Now that that delivery that cleaning delivery service has uh, f- four out of five stars. Not bad, not bad. But topless maids. That's the one I see. They have the big pink vans. Has two stars. Ooh, uh oh. And n- uh, let's see if they have any written reviews. I've called different companies for my husband, and when I called, I, why is it always the fucking husband? Jesus. And why is it the wife compelled to write the review? 
See, a few seconds later, I received a text of scantily clad women that I never requested and kept harassing with text to where I had to block him. Never call this unprofessional company. Then, a, then one five star. Yeah. So no one really reviewed them really well. I see their vans in Burbank. Uh, out, right, Actually, right next to the Walt Disney Animation Headquarters is where they park their vans. Because every time I drive through Burbank, past that area, I see the big pink van for the topless maid service. We should, uh, why don't we offer that service? Just like, we'll clean your house topless. With our dicks out. Uh, I don't, I don't think that one's legal. What? What do you mean? Is there a legal service where I can pull, like, my penis out and it's legal? I mean, they're paying for the cleaning. You just pulled your dick out. And if they're okay with it, so what? Well, they'd have to sign something in advance because... You pay, like, strippers to strip. You just can't pay them for sexual acts. You can take out your penis. They have male strippers all the time. That's true, that's true. For your birth- fucking idiot, dude. Relax, okay. I just want to pull out my penis and clean. That's my passion. Every time I clean my house, I have this pair of of cargo slacks, and I'll just pull my penis through the zipper, and then just that's that's the only way I can clean. Yeah, I love cleaning, man. To be honest, it's like it's it's tiring, but it's such a nice feeling. Like that's cleaning a, that's, your. That's interesting because I can't tell. <laughs> You're really. You really outdid yourself at the end. <laughs> that was a perfectly good slight. And then you were like... <laughs> <laughs> no, my place is pretty fucking messy because Harrison and Jackson live with me. And they're clean people. But when you have three grown men living in a one-person place in the living room, it can get a little bit messy. Well, maybe they should get fucking jobs. Maybe they should get jobs. Stop get mooching off of their best friend, Matt. <sighs> they're not mooching off of me. I'm mooching off of them, if anything, because I, Harrison will cook dinner every night and clean. And uh, I told him, I was like, I was like, Harrison, I'm going to, we were joking about something. I was like, I'm going to kick you out of the apartment. He's like, then who's going to do the cooking and cleaning? And I was like, okay, okay, touche. That's a <laughs> grown man who needs his friends to cook for him. And topless, se- <laughs> topless. Se- sex looking ladies to come over. <laughs> I love how like, it's kind of like the same argument of like when you're leaving your mom's house. It's like, then who's going to cook for you? Fuck. Damn it. Didn't think about that. I remember... I can't go back to cereal and Bunch of Crunch for the rest of my life. I love Bunch of Crunch, though. It's good. Like Put I it say. in your popcorn. Oh, sorry. I was thinking of a... Uh, I was thinking of a uh, Honey Bunches of Oats. I mean, I was like, why would I put that in my... Po- oh, you mean the candy Bunch of Crunch. Yeah. Which we had last night because we went to go see the movie The Favorite. Which is good movie. Really, really good. I really liked it, yeah. Really, really, really good. Oh, I like my the God. director. I forgot what... It, Olivia... Whatever. It's a phenomenal actress. So is Rachel Weitz and Emma Stone. Yeah, they were great. Um, I really like the cinematography with the camera whips, though. <laughs> yeah, I love like, that shit. I like the whips; those were very nice, especially like the small whips that were just the, made, oh yeah, were just, just meant like, to be kind of like an eye focus, mm-hmm. like how someone's eye. They kind of did that shit a little bit in Hereditary with the eye movement. Remember? Yeah, after that one particular scene where the son's eyes are like darting everywhere in the front of the car. Oh yeah, really well done. Good ass camera work, and uh. I don't well, know, like I, the set design, the oh, costume all of it was design, great. the, acting the was writing, awesome. acting. Everything was done like really well. And I don't know how you felt about it because I, I did hear you say something after the movie. I personally liked the like fisheye and like wide angle lens stuff they did, like the really weird kind of distorted lens shots. The thing is that director's done a lot of stuff, and like in in his movies, especially in Killing of a Sacred Deer, he uses those shots where it's like a lot of open space above and stuff like that. And I think that those shots didn't work as well with the fisheye. And I understand the fisheye used as like a stylistic thing, but I didn't understand the stylistic intent of it in this movie. It was almost like a reverse fisheye. Yeah. I don't I don't know what it's called, but it was like, instead of it like bulging out, it was like everything that wasn't in the center was I don't, like... It's like it didn't super like, wide, it just didn't, super wide lenses. It didn't detract from the whole movie. It just like every time it happened, I'm like, ooh, a fisheye. It kind of was like, it made me think of the specific camera lens and the way they were filming instead oh. of the scene it was setting up or whatever it was doing. Usually it was just a transition of like following a horse carriage on a trail for like a split five seconds. Like the, the fisheye lens is used in what, like five shots at most. Yeah. It wasn't much. Um, so as I said, it doesn't take you out that much, but as I said, like whenever I saw it, it's kind of like when you're watching a YouTube video of a skateboard YouTube video and all of a sudden they throw in that fisheye lens stuff. You're like, Ooh, yo, we got to get a fucking fisheye lens and we got to go skate. We got to shoot some skateboard videos. Skater boy, dude. I actually do have, I, I want to do a video where we just go to a skate park and put like, like Bam Margera's band over it, CKY. <laughs> and then we just get a fisheye and just film ourselves just trying to skate, but shoot it like a skate video and like, like try to drop into a half pipe or. You already saw some- what happened when I try the drop. <laughs> 
<laughs> we didn't even mean to. <laughs> we just kind of did it and then <laughs> fell off the skateboard. And th- At the end of our video, Skater Boy and Friendly Cop, after the end card, there's a shot of Ryan uh, where he's standing on the skateboard. Tucker didn't capture it. It's, it's like half off camera. Yeah. But Ryan accidentally, while he's standing on the skateboard <laughs> getting ready for shit. the shot, the skateboard just like starts to go down the ramp. No, the thing is I did that on, like I went down, I was going down the ramp on purpose because I thought like, this is a small thing, I can do it. And then nope. Because I was just, leaning back. What? I was leaning back. And it's honestly, supposed to lean yeah. forward apparently. Yeah, you got to like lean with, with it to keep your gravity like center. Yeah. But but you, uh, you could see it at the very end of the video. You guys should go watch it. It was very funny. Yeah, just but, poured bubbles all in my eyes. Yeah, you had like, an open container of bubble mix. <laughs> and when you fell, it was like a perfect banana peel slip. Like in a cartoon when a kid slips on a banana peel. It was just like that. You could easily add that sound effect. And you threw the bubble mix straight in your face. <laughs> And your your head it didn't and your hurt. Face, I mean, sorry, it did hurt. It was coated with the, with a the soapy bubble mix, and you just Wonderful. like stand. You just stand up, and you're just like covered in it. <laughs> I think that's the funniest thing about that was not the fact that you even fell. I mean, that that was funny. <laughs> it was the added benefit the of fact having that you bubble threw mix a whole bottle eyes. of bubble mix in your eyes <laughs> in the process of doing it. The it things was, I do for the sketch. It was just so perfect. I loved it, man. This this whole podcast episode has just been talking about like comedic times when you have fallen or thrown something in your face or shit on the back of a toilet seat and it's just an unfortunately ryan situation a series of unfortunate events a series of ryan events is that the name of this episode sure i don't know what are we gonna name this one what's the thumbnail gonna be funny poop how about us as topless maid topless maids i mean we can't draw ourselves okay titties. well we don't have to have titties We'll just be topless. Or you could be blowing... How about Don does an incredibly detailed, hyper-realistic, like, oil painting style of shit blowing out of your ass onto the toilet? Like my, like... Okay. Yeah. I actually don't know what we could use for this podcast that's... Guys, give us suggestions in the comments. Well, I mean, it's already come out, but... Fuck. Fuck. I know, I know. It's... It's, 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 uh... It's a hard one. Yeah. Um, Maybe since there's more conversation to be had... There will be something, we'll figure something a little out. more safe to work. Well, we can later. come up with a f- clever thumbnail and then base the conversation around it to justify it. Yeah, like, we've done that in the past. We have, like, yeah, once or twice. Once, I think we were like, we need a thumbnail. Let's have this conversation so we can have that thumbnail. How about, um, I got it. Mm-hmm. How about us sitting in the Oval Office uh, with Bill Clinton, and he's smoking a cigar, and he's got a big ass grin on his face, and you and I. Can we have faint white stains on our clothes? We can like both be wearing dresses faint. with this faint yeah, white Yeah, the famous blue dress. Okay. We're both w- wearing the blue dress. Bill Clinton looked at the dress and went, Is it, is it black and blue or white and gold? That's not my cum. That, that was the, it. you know, there was that whole dress meme where it's like, What color's the dress? It was blue. Blue and black. I saw white and gold. Isn't I'm that sorry, weird? but it's not, that, it wasn't No, I, I know, but I, when I see it, I see white and gold. Uh, so you saw the wrong thing. Well, it's just and how I saw my, the right. It's thing. just how my eyes work, Ryan. Just like Yanny and Laurel, the greatest meme of 2019. Yeah, that one. That one, though, it's specifically kind of. They're not actually. I don't know what. Are, what are they actually saying? It has to do with like frequencies you can hear. Yeah. So some people can only hear one thing. I can only hear Yanny, and you can only hear Laurel. Yeah, I never heard. I, I heard Yanny when because you can change the pitch. It's all about like it, when you change. The I had pitch. to change it like almost to the end to hear Same. Laurel, and I was like, "What the <laughs> hell?" Well, the thing is, when you do that, then you can start going back further, and you can hear a it, little bit. Yeah. yeah, dude, we should make Yanny or Laurel T-shirts. <laughs> Wouldn't that be sick? Oh yeah, and then they could have um, they could have Zelda on it. <gasps> they could have uh, you know, my favorite types of designs are those that you would find in Hot Topic. Ooh, imagine Hot Topic taking over our merch, and they just sell the worst fucking like shirts. I'm really excited that we're in control of our merch operation because, like, I love designing shirts and I love working with Ryan to come up with, like, cool-ass ideas for merch. We got some cool stuff on the way. We got stuff coming soon. Maybe beanies? Maybe tote bags? Tote bags? We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. We'll just, just a little tease. Just, little just a little thoughts. a little nipple rub for you. Yeah. Just to get your nipples slightly uh, erect if I you're would, over the age of 18. I would love to uh, have some new merch go on sale this month if we can have that happen. But right now we're still uh, we're still finalizing the past few sales just to make sure everything is going to go off without a hitch this Apparently, time. Apparently the United States <coughs> Postal Service <coughs> they lost like <coughs> They lost like almost 50 packages. Yeah, like, I think that... <coughs> Are you done? Uh, Are you done? Well, Can I, I always choose to swallow my mucus instead of spitting it up. Oh, Ryan, come on, man. I have nothing to spit it in. I think that the United States Postal Service, uh, 
on their list of skills is delivering packages but right below that their second skill is losing packages and god so many people were just like i never got my package and then we go and we check the tracking and it's like well we shipped it out three weeks ago it's been stuck in transit since november 18th it's definitely <laughs> uh not still in transit almost two months later i <laughs> know so so yeah they lost it um and then some people were like yeah the guy left my poster out in the rain or like some person said that like when they got their package, it had been cut open and taped back together. So someone in the postal service ripped it open or cut it open and cut it and like taped it back together. And in the process, they cut the shirt and then just like left it. How can there be no like repercussions? Like, is there no way to figure out? There's like, just so how many how fucking happened? letters that have to be delivered. It's like they can't track and trace all that stuff. So to everyone whose package was lost, uh, Sorry. apologies. Uh, that sucks. We're going through the help we, emails we're, and we're, we're trying we're to like, stuff. like fix stuff and all um, that. So don't worry about that. We are uh, making sure we're in the phase right now where we're just kind of dealing with uh, any orders that maybe had like I ordered two patches and I only got one or like their package was lost. We're dealing with all that and making sure everyone is happy. And like we said, if you have any problems with your merch, email us at help at super mega show dot net uh, and we'll see what we can do. Just yeah. make sure you include your four digit order number or so else. we can look it up. Otherwise, it's very difficult for us. Because a lot of people order us, or uh, a lot of people email us, and they'll use a different email from the one they ordered with, and they won't include any information for us to look up their order. So then we're like... Just make sure in the subject is your order number, that's about it. Yeah, just just put your four-digit order number from Shopify. Yeah. Thank you. Anyways. Thank you. Anyways, Ryan. Um, how's your nose? Stuff. Looks swollen. It does? Looks huge. Jesus. What? Never mind. I was, about, I, was about, I, was about, I was about to say, sound, it's funny coming from you, but then I didn't say it. But now I did say it, so I could say it, because I'm a little bitch. I've been watching... Uh, a bunch of Fig Newtons, dude. Yeah, when I get home, I just line up Fig Newtons, and I sit there and fucking watch them for five hours, Ryan. You're absolutely spot on with that one. Congratulations <laughs> on the best joke of the podcast. Fucking slap my skin right there, bro. I did. That was actually, that was funny. I a little it. animosity. No, it's not animosity. Then jealousy? Yeah. It's jealousy. Because <laughs> I'm so funny? I was like, fuck, why didn't I come up with the figure? <laughs> um, uh, I've been watching the assassination of Gianni Versace, uh, which is the second season of American Crime Story. The first one was the O.J. Simpson one, which was phenomenal. Phenomenal. And but we all know about O.J. Not everybody knows about Gia Giovanni. Say that again? Gia Giovanni. Giorgio jo Giovanni? Yeah, Gia. What clothing line did he design? Gia G Giovanni. Giovanni. Is Giovanni a clothing line? It's a uh, guy that does... Come on, Ryan. It's one of the biggest designer brands. Yeezy. So far off. S Supreme. These are hype beast brands. I'm talking about like, <laughs> like classic designer brands. I just said it. You want me to give you a letter? Yeah. V. Victoria's Secrets. Not Vic Victoria's Secrets? She has multiple secrets? Victoria's Secret. No. Also designed by a man, though. He uh, took his own life, I believe. Come on, Ryan. What clothing Versace. Line? Versace. There you go. There we go. Like the Migos song. Yeah. Versace. Versace you see how Versace. in tune I am to fashion, Matthew. Well, I mean, I'm surprised. This should prove it. What, your Versace pants? Yeah. Those are beautiful. That Greco design? Beautiful. Thank you. If I had the money, I would buy Versace underwear. It's like $75 a pair. And I'm like, no, I can never spend that much money on fucking underwear. Ryan McGee, the type of boy to buy a black hoodie then cut the sleeves off because he's too hot. <laughs> Just take the hoodie off. No. Why would you cut the sleeves off? I like, I like the look of a hoodie. But I also got hot, so I cut the sleeves off. And you can tell because they're those scissors. Like I cut them okay. with scissors. I got. I cut them with like fucking scissors. No, I know. I know exactly which one you're talking about. I've seen you wear it. It's like, but what I gotta say, Ryan, is that's that's innovation. Like you are a fashion innovator. That's yeah. like, think about it. You design basically. A lot of fashion designers will take old clothes and then like repurpose them and make something new. That's what you did. You 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 have designed fashion before. Just just think about that. You are a fashion designer by definition. Ooh. You made your own thing. That you put your own ideas and soul into. Much like how, like, first people, like, will have regular underwear and then a, a company will come out of nowhere and make the most comfortable underwear on earth. Versace. Me undies. Oh, me undies. It's a new year, and you've probably made some resolutions to make 2019 awesome. I have. An easy one to add to your list, Matt. You know what that would be? 
Would it uh, be starting the year off right with a pack of new underwear from MeUndies? It would, actually, yes. That is exactly what I was going to say. Read your mind. Well, you. Yes, my mind is what you read. Not the script. You know what I've done recently? What? I've used our funny, funny super mega code, and I actually purchased myself a pack of MeUndies because I'm like, you know what? They're soft. They, they sent us those free sweats, and I like that material. What? No, I, I wasn't trying to give you a look. I think oh. my, my face just naturally made that face. You have this look where you like, yeah. <laughs> no, I didn't mean to make that Your face. Your neck cranes back. I didn't even bit. realize. I was just kind of like <clears throat> lost in what you it's were like saying. It's like a turtle going back into its shell a little bit. But um, I, I bought some underwear. And I, I also bought some black sweats. Yeah. You got the sleeves off too, <laughs> of the sweats, the <laughs> sleeves. So, so it's just it's, you just made your own underwear. Out of it. <laughs> yep, and and they're and they're super comfortable. I love my me undies, and you would too if you bought some. Did you know that me undies are made from a naturally soft, breathable fiber that is three times softer than cotton? It's like being hugged by an emotionally supportive cloud. The quiet part of the song shout. It's like swimming in a pool of cotton candy without the stickiness. Your footsteps when you're 16 and get home after curfew. Yeah, it's all those things. Ryan, when he actually he used our own code to get himself fifteen uh, percent off. Why not? Why and not? No, no, I'm not saying it's, it's a bad thing. It's like, hey, why not? <laughs> and because uh, you were buying me undies and you are super mega, so it's like, why wouldn't you use your your code? And like. <laughs> Uh, they showed up and I thought that it was just more free underwear, so I opened it up. And they're <laughs> yeah. like, why are you opening my underwear? And I was like, oh shit, sorry. <laughs> You're touching my undies! Come, dude, they come in a nice ass package. Oh, I yeah. do have to say that. Like, you open it and there's like a little card and it's like, there's like a pair and it's like, try them on to make sure they fit before you open the rest. What are these? Dude, what are these? Dude, we're both wearing the underwear? I'm wearing my watermelon ones that have dude. watermelon slices on them. See, like, they're so soft. Ryan has his pants fully down. I've, I've just had to check the window. I, I heard someone that. walking up. But uh, but Ryan loves his MeUndies. I love my MeUndies. It's honestly I've replaced my entire underwear drawer with MeUndies. It's like all I have now. They're 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 pretty sweet. They're the boxer briefs. Some would God, say I it's. Some would say it's the best way to upgrade your undie undie drawer fast. So listen up, viewers. MeUndies has a great offer for all of you beautiful people. For any first time purchasers, when you order MeUndies, you get 15% off and free shipping. Start the year off right. Flip your underwear drawer. Get 15% off the most comfortable undies you will ever put on that sweet little body of yours. So to get 15% off of your first pair, free shipping, and a 100% satisfaction guarantee, go to MeUndies.com slash SuperMega. That's MeUndies.com slash SuperMega. This this Sick. The, this podcast sponsors. What what do you need? Food and dick holsters. We got both of them. Or vagina holsters. Well, for, I'm so, I'm talking for us. I don't have a vagina. Yeah, you sure about that, Mama's boy? I don't have a I don't have a big. <laughs> Ryan's gonna unveil his new pussy at the next live show. Man, could you imagine like how great it would feel to just have a beautiful pussy or a beautiful set of tits? Yeah. I'm jealous. You know, you know people who have a beautiful set of tits or a beautiful pussy. Set of pussies. Yeah. <laughs> Buy one, Two get beautiful one. pussies. <laughs> they, do they not have that? Like, whatever people, like, go to get surgeries or anything, they don't have, like, a buy one, get one free? Wake up, like, hey, we threw on an extra pussy. <laughs> buy one, get one free deal. Got these LED light strips so you can see it in the dark? Yeah, yeah and there's a music mode so the lights change color to they're, music? They're a part of the Philips Hue collection that you can control it with an app. Imagine like you go in for like foot surgery and you wake up and you got two dicks. <laughs> what the fuck is this? Like, oh, we were at, we we're having a special what at the, the hospital. I love that. What the fuck is this? We we're having a we we're having a promo deal, so we just threw it in for free. Thanks. <laughs> I wake up and I have like two dicks and a pussy. Like, you wake up from a doc like a doctor's office. You find out they removed your cock and you're like, what? You're an organ donor. It's like what? What? what yeah, when I fucking die. <laughs> That's how it works. <laughs> I know the doctor's Shit. like, we made a mistake. Well. Get his cock back. Here's a ten dollar coupon to the gift shop downstairs. <laughs> it's like it's like ten dollars off any purchase over one hundred dollars at the gift shop. I survived my drive by shooting. <laughs> <laughs> the L.A. hospital says shirts like that. <laughs> Why don't hospitals have like gift shops like that? you can just buy like very morbid gifts, like a coffee mug that's like buy a shirt that says "I hope I survive." <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> God, that's awful. Well, that's why they don't do it. No, my favorite, not my favorite part. You know what the goofiest part is about hospitals? What? Is like if someone's in the UI, not UI, if someone's in the EU, sorry. If some wait, EU that, is in, European. Sorry, Union. ER, sorry. Anyways, <laughs> it is, it is. UI. Start that over, start that over, start, start that over. <laughs> if someone's in the ER and, and people are like, yeah, this person's not going to make it through, they'll send in 
like a priest be like, oh, so can I uh, pray? And so like if the family or anyone's not religious, you're just like, no, thanks. Are you sure? Because, uh, you know, if I don't, they're going to go to hell. <laughs> just just going to put that on the table. No, no, it's all it's fine. I just find it weird that like they have like maybe you just maybe the hospital doesn't hire a priest. Maybe a priest out is there. just walking around the ER like, oh, looking at sad families. Can I pray? I just find that odd. It, it is. It is weird, especially considering it's like. They they should have someone that's like uh, multi religional, so they can be like, "Are you? Oh, you're 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 Islamic. Let's let's pray. Yeah, to God of Islam." But it's just it was just Christianity from what I saw. He knocks on the door. He's like, "Can I? Oh, you're Jews. Okay, sorry. Uh, I'll get someone else." <laughs> what about like what they just, just just fucking bring in a wizard and he can just like <laughs> cast like life spells on the person? Can I cast spells? Sure. Or like one of those like horoscope like L A crystal people. Like, can I charge my crystals? Uh, on his body. I'm surprised the people that own those businesses can afford rent. The crystal places? Well, no, dude, no, 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 no. The, uh, the psychics. That also, I oh, guess, yeah. sell crystals on the side. How do too. they make so much money in those places where they can afford, like, rent a in L- business rent in, in LA? Because that shit is expensive. I guess a lot of rich people love their horoscopes and love their fucking... Because that's the thing, is like, we I do... we we horoscope we, people, dude. Hor- like, I do, I love horoscopes. Whenever I see horoscope shit, like... <laughs> I'll see, I'll see people like, I'm a, I'm a. It's big on Twitter now. It's like, tell me what your Zodiac sign is. It's like, what, what does it matter? It doesn't nothing, none of that shit matters. Here's the thing. Like, I it's don't. fun. Yes. Yeah. I don't it's believe like in that It's like a fortune cookie. I think it's fun. It's and, fun. And I, I like, I like uh, joking about different like people's signs and shit. It's very popular on Twitter right now. And I think it's fun to like, like talk about and do but it's like yeah of course i don't i don't think it's real or has any actual like standing as i said it's like a it's fortune it's like a fortune cookie it's fun to read but it has no basis in reality are you a leo is that what you are i'm a gemini gemini everyone hates gemini's apparently and donald trump's a gemini what's that say well him and i share the same birthday and you were in the hospital fun fact i was gonna tweet this out the other night i was watching the oj simpson show and I was watching the car chase scene, and I was like... I think I've mentioned this in the podcast. You, you have. And I was like, this is... Ryan was in the hospital with his mommy, just born when this happened. Yeah. I was... I was... I was, Because they keep you, I guess, several days in the hospital after, after oh, yeah. you give birth. His car, car chase was June 17th. You yeah. were... B- 14th. Yeah. So, so my mom was, was in the hospital. She told me she was in the hospital watching it. She's like, whoa. Well... That sounded just like your mom, by the way. <laughs> wow. I was surprised. Uh, I'm an Aquarius. Um, that and sounds I, uh, beautiful. I do love being an Aquarius, I gotta say. Is that, like, water-based? Are you like, yeah. are, do you have like water powers? It's like the, the water god. What's a Gemini? The two faced fuck. All I know about Gemini is it's the, it's the boss and bastard, the, an untrustworthy it? piece of shit. That's what a Gemini is. My mom's an Aquarius too. Everyone, so was Jackson. Like, I thought a Gemini was like the twins, a beautiful yin and yang. I thought Gemini of sorts. was like twins. They are the twins, but that's why they're two faced. Oh. They're two faced pieces of shit that you shouldn't trust, Matt. Is that what Gemini is, really? Yeah. Aquarius is a. I don't fucking, you know, I'm gonna look it up, Ryan. Let's do our, let's do our, Harrison was joking, like, in LA now, how it's like, when, when they give you your birth certificate when you're born, they're also gonna have, like, your, your, like, rising moon, like, star chart on there, too. Have you ever, have you ever done that? Like, your full, like, star chart, where it's like, you're a, you're a rising moon, Gemini, quarter, waxing, I, I don't know how it works. You gotta, like, put in very specific times about your birthday. Let's look up Aquarius and Aquarius, Aquarius and Gemini compatibility let's let's look this up ryan um gemini and aquarius compatibility ready when gemini and aquarius come together in a love of no not that one um like a, like how about this one? aquarius is january 20th uh to february 18th aquarius <laughs> and gemini are both air signs that have a killer psychological connection and it goes deep really deep Ooh. like finishing each other's yeah we get it I just want to interrupt because we both know where that's headed. Okay. Well, all right. Uh, wouldn't there, be, it wouldn't even be your sentence, though. It would be that that's that's setting us up to, to have that connection. So that's bullshit. Their relationship is almost mystical because it's, only, it's, it's one no one else can comprehend. After all, only they know what's going on in their heads and each other's. I'm going to be honest. It's like... There have been people in the office that have said stuff similar to that about us in yeah. terms of like our, our, um, this shit's accurate, Ryan. Our, uh, what is it? Uh, chemistry, chemistry. Yeah. 
They get what works from they get what works for them and don't care that others might not see it. And while both of these signs have a strong sense of individuality, they don't let it hurt their relationship. In fact, it only strengthens it. But all in all, these two choose to stride their life walking arm in arm because they'd rather be together than apart. Wow, that's sweet. Look at sweet. that, Ryan. That's sweet. What's my horoscope for the day as just a Gemini? Um, let me, uh... You will smoke cigarettes and weed after work and then watch Netflix and play video games until 4 a.m. Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's see. Let's see. I pooted. Uh, that smells. Well, thank you, Ryan. Um, <laughs> I predict that I will chart and then it would stink the whole place up. Okay. January 9th, 2019. Here's your uh, Gemini horoscope. Emotions that run very deep should bring you a lot of satisfaction today, Gemini. Relationships of all kinds could also be especially promising. A romantic relationship may be consummated, revitalized, or moved to the next level of commitment. Today? Yeah. Close friendships might become closer because of your mutual interests. I feel like you and I get closer every day. Of course. Happiness and satisfaction should reign in the home today. So when you get home, you're going to have a good time. Pretty accurate. Scary. Let me look at my Aquarius horoscope Uh for today. Matt's looking at his Aquarius horoscope. Okay, my daily Aquarius horoscope. January 9th, 2019. Today you might have insights as to how to advance your career. These could come your way through dreams, sudden revelations, or perhaps visions. Don't hesitate to put them into action simply because of the unorthodox way they come to you, Aquarius. Some of the most progressive and successful ideas have come because the inventor had a vivid dream. Write down your insights and go for it. I was writing ideas in my notebook today that I was having. Ryan, I think we could safely say that these uh, horoscopes might not be all that bullshit. You're right. I'm going to live my life by them. And if it says I'm going to have a bad day, I will preemptively prepare myself to have a bad day. And then day. just be in a bad mood all day because you're expecting it. Even though the day could have been wonderful if you just didn't read that horoscope. I think the way horoscopes work is... Do they try to be positive? Not always, but they're so vague that I feel like anybody could apply it to themselves. Like a fortune cookie? Exactly. You will make a new friend today. And it's like... <gasps> Oh, I made a new friend in myself. See? Exactly. Oh. I think those things like fortune cookies. That wasn't an Asian. Yeah, that was not an Asian. That was just me going, oh, I know how I just wanted the. Okay, racist. Um, But like, it's they're so vague that it's like so easy just to you can find a way if you want to to make it fit to yourself. You know, like I could apply yours to me and you can probably apply mine to yours. But overall, horoscopes are 100 percent science and we should live our lives by them. (laughs) Yep. Um, you know what I don't like, Matt? What? The cringy TikTok ads I see all the time. I don't see where, TikTok ads. On TV? Or, I see it where? on like Facebook. Like I, I, I go on Facebook like once a week and every time I go, there's like this TikTok ad and it's like of that goofy person dressed as the Mad Hatter and they're like, la da, 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 la da, 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 And I'm like, that's, oh, that's the worst song I on TikTok. Fucking da, hate da, that. Da, 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 da. So and then it's like, ladies. And then they go, la da. And then they go, good guy. And it's like, oh, I hate that. I hate everything. Because, like, it's usually some guy in a fucking, like, top hat with, like, or, like, it'll be some kid in a top hat and then, like, fake five o'clock shadow and shit. Like the Rick and Morty uh, TikToks yeah. when they happened. Or Vines. I don't remember what, what that was. Just the, the Rick and Morty, like, I think they were TikToks. I've, uh, Blonde Boys, by the way, has over a million TikToks. Jesus Christ, guys. I don't know if I should be excited or scared. I have no basis in how popular that really is on the TikTok platform. Very popular. Okay. It's like, uh, from what I've heard, it's gone viral on TikTok. Wow, thank you. Thanks, guys, for real. Like, uh, that's pretty sweet. Uh, it's our verses, you and me. It's it's my, uh, what's up? I'm Ethan. And, and I'm, I'm 14. Ford. And the one about Tommy where he rubs sunscreen on his nips and the, the bell of his my cock. cock. Yeah. Sun kissed Howdy, I'm like Jerome, and I'm 37. I've been blessed with these sweet, sweet blonde, blonde boys, boys from, from heaven. Oh, got me in the boys, some blonde hair dyed. Now, now we, we get, get the, the ladies wet, wet like a slip and slide. When I was their age, I didn't, didn't have many friends. friends. But these sweet, moist boys keep me up on the trends. They like to call me dad, but I say no. Can't they see who I am? Just another blonde bro. Sun kissed hair like, like a can of soda exploded and coated my yeah. head and go to my... Oh! Oh!